It's Ross Smith. Punch out boxing here with Deontay Wilder's coach himself, Malik Scott. Malik, first of all, I'd say kudos to you because after Deontay's last fight, you came straight out and faced the media and you also said what not enough people say that actually there weren't nothing wrong with Deontay. Parker was actually just really good, which yeah. is often the case. And Andy Andy Lee as well. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. had a good methodical game plan. They did just enough in every round to win the round. And it's a high level skill in that. It's a high level skill in doing that, especially if you're able to do that against someone as dangerous as Deontay. They did a good job that night and um, kudos to them. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know why people always go try and look for something negative. Yeah. Sometimes just get beaten but on the day. Um, yeah, De Deontay, um, is it fair to say that he weren't as best prepared as he could be because what, what the event was so big, the money was so good, they had to take it at short notice, not not the right preparation that you'd yeah, want? Well, yeah, I'm sure. Like The opportunity came, he took it. Oh, we hopped in training camp. Everything was really on the rush job. And things didn't go our way. And things didn't go our way because the opponent we had, yeah, we made was on a rush job. But I believe even on a rush job, Deontay is still the most dangerous man on the planet. But he couldn't pull the trigger that night. So what did he do after the fight? He didn't sit around and cry. Or, yeah, we sit around and powder a little bit because we human. But once we got back to the States, we got right back into training. We camped two, three months earlier ahead of time. Now he's ready now. So we'll see, man. He's going to knock Jing out. Yeah, a lot of people make... A big deal about the fact that Deontay might make excuses for his defeats, but is that actually just part of a winner's mentality? Like, you know, actually, you don't accept that the other guy was better than you. It's like, nah, you know, there's things that went wrong. Yeah, but but somebody could not be better than you. But in boxing, they're just not better than you on the night. Like somebody, like I don't know, like name a fighter. Um, I think Mike Tyson is a better fighter than Buster Douglas, but not on that night. Like you know what I mean? I think Lennox Lewis is a better fighter than Hasim Rothman, but not on that night. Like, that's why boxing is so beautiful and so artistic, because this is the, I wouldn't say this is the only sport, really, where you could beat someone that's better than you, because it's all about the night. Who's coming feeling good? Who's coming confident? Who's coming willing to stick to a game plan? Who's coming with the most humility? Just so much on the line, so many things to be covered. And Deontay did allude to the fact that maybe he'd lost a bit of an edge, a bit too mellow. Don't know yeah. how much the ayahuasca yeah. had an effect, but from what you've seen of him, is he, is he back on point? He's got yeah. that. Yes, he's all the way back. Started training camp two, three months ago. Uh, we've been working, we've been drilling, and just been getting better and ready to be violent, and ready to be himself, and be a knockout artist that he is. Yeah. I spoke to Sean George uh, and he revealed yes. you two went to school together. So you know each other's fight well. game inside out yeah, and I alluded to the fact that, that could it turn this fight into a real tactical chess game because both men know the other one can turn each other's lights out with a, with a shot. Yes, yes. Um, they got knockout written all over it. You know what I mean? But Deontay is a knockout artist. Um, we as she, we, we'll see if Zhang, how he handles being hit the hardest he's ever been hit. If he can handle it, he's just going to receive more of it. If he can't handle it, we on the bigger and better things next fight. And uh, ask whether the size could be a factor. We know Deontay's not, not a big heavyweight by modern standards, but as we've seen, big heavyweights are slower and they gas out. Yeah, big. I mean, the bigger you are, the slower you are. So we'll say... You could be, I don't know, it's just like you, you, you can't get out the way as quick and the right hand is coming fast. So we'll see. We'll see. The fight got knockout written all over it. I'm looking forward to it. Deontay is ready. He's going to be the violent man that you all fell in love with when he was here. Uh, uh, how long ago did you uh, know about this fight that, that it would take? I remember how long ago. I knew, I knew the opportunity came. Negotiations was going on. And... But plenty of time, though, to prepare this time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Deontay started camp two months ago, so. All right. Okay, um, just uh, on the other heavyweight fight, uh, um, just get your opinion. Uh, young Daniel Dubois has come out of his show. What do you think of him and Hergovic? Oh, that's a good fight. It's a real good fight because uh, Don Charles has been doing a great job at developing Daniel Dubois and making him a better fighter. Um, but Elite is one of my favorite young heavyweights. And, you know, he's violent. I like it's a good, great fight, great matchup. 
And you gotta give that kind of credit to Turkey. You have to give that kind of credit to Eddie and Frank. Like, you know what I mean? That's 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 a great matchup. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. And the week before, we we'll finally get an undisputed heavyweight champ. First time in nearly 30 years. Uh, how'd you see that one going? Good, good. Um, I had it 50-50 at first, but Fury's coming in shape. So him coming in shape, he has a better chance at winning. All right, Malik, thanks for your time. Uh, it's been a long flight and you spoke to all of us. So uh, I hope to see you in Saudi Arabia.